Welcome to IntelliVideos. This video provides a general introduction to the new Intello software. The Intello introduction is divided into five separate videos. For the best understanding, these videos should be viewed in order. This third video will introduce how to optimize safe procedures, adding a cyclic voltammetry command and have a closer look at the CV parameters, and at last, the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy command. Let's continue for a moment with the three chronopulses procedure which we've used previously. Open the pulses in the shared database. So we go to procedures, and in the shared database library, you will find the pulses test which we've used previously. We look at the sequence. And here we'll find the pulses which we've used. Before we continue with the optimizing the procedure, let's toggle on the display of the command numbers in the sequence editor. So this one here. It appears as a 1, 2, 3 above the sequence. This is a handy feature, especially for procedures that are going to get complex with more commands in the same sequence. Each command in the sequence is assigned a number based on its position in the sequence. So the repeat loop has uh, number three, and under the repeat loop there's number 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3. These numbers are used in various parts of the software to refer to a specific command in the sequence. For example, in the main parameter dialog. We will see an example in a few moments. Let's say we decide that our results will be better when we do a few cyclic voltammetry cycles before the pulses to clean the electrode. We can modify this procedure to make it more suitable for our experiment. Add the staircase CV command to the sequence right before the repeat loop. So we press the plus button and here we'll find CV staircase and this we can drag and drop just before the repeat loop. You can also see that the numbers are changes automatically. Let's configure the CV waveform. So we open the CV staircase, the star potential minus 0 0.1, first vertex 0 0.5, second vertex minus 0 0.4, and the stop potential minus 0 0.1 volt. Please pay close attention to the waveform plot on the right as we adjust the CV waveform, this one here. For example, if you change the stop potential at 0 0.5, you immediately see that the example of the waveform is changing as well. This waveform plot was added to make it very clear how the configured cyclic voltammetry waveform will be applied. Now we configure it back to 0 0.1 volts. Let's add the number of cycles and the CV scan rate to the main parameter lists. So we go to the number of cycles. This you can add, create a link to the new main parameters but also the scan rate you can create to the main parameters, like this. We can adjust the scan rate to 400 milliseconds, because we want to so 400 millivolt per second, and the number of cycles to, for example, four. Now we want to customize the appearance of the main parameters. To make it a bit make more sense in the name and recognizable to have in a specific order. For example, you can go to the edit main parameter dialog and then you can change the names and also the order. For example, the number of cycles we go first, the scan rate we want to have second, repetitions of the pulses. So we can also give it a different name cleaning cycles, 
cleaning cycles cleaning scan rate repetition of the pulses of pulse repetition and the pulse duration you see that in the main parameters we have now the cleaning cycles at four the moment we change this for example to five it automatically changes also in the command line we can select what kind of signals we want to measure we're interested in the potential and the current and that's it. So we've added a CV staircase before the repeat loop of the pulses. Let's focus for a moment on the links column in the main parameter dialog. So you can find here the links column. And each link you will see that is linked to a certain command parameter in the command. So this number is linked to the number of cycles in the CV staircase command. And this number is linked to the scan rate in the CV staircase command. This is in the repeat loop linked and here you'll find the pulses duration. You can also see that the numbers of each command tile are changed as well. 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3. Press OK to accept. One more thing, let's make sure that we see the CV data in our plots. Well, we have our plot here, and we can drag and drop the CV data directly into the plot of the pulses. And we can say suggested series I versus, so the current versus time, add. Now we can modify the plots. So our first current is pulse one, pulse one. Second is pulse two. This is pulse three. And the last one is my CV. And we can make the CV in a different color. For example, we can uh, have a full spectrum. Like this. This feature enables you to see each cycle appear with a different color in your plots. Now that we are done optimizing the procedure, let's save it. Well, we go here in the upper right corner, save procedure to the library as and then we can give it a name. CV, cleaning, and pulses test. Then we can say CV plus three repeat loop chrono. Save. Now it's saved in the procedures here, cleaning and pulses test. And, um, what we can do now is we can go back to the procedure and we can run it. You can see that the procedure is already loaded underneath my Vionic instrument. The start button is available and I can start the procedure. Before we start, we can change the main parameters. For example, the cleaning cycles we want to set to four. Cleaning scan rate is four on millivolt a second. That's okay. Number of pulses repetitions two times and the duration of the pulse let's make it um, four seconds cleaning cycles four and everything is accepted you see that the procedure is underneath my Vionic which means we can start execute the procedure it's going to be stored in my personal library of my data folder you can modify this or browse to another library if you want. But when we press start, 
measurement is starting. You see the CV scan appearing. You can also follow the sequence. So the second scan, the third scan. And we can follow what's going on in the graph. You can also double click on the graph if you want to enlarge it. And the pulses are applied. You see that each scan has a different color. And the same counts for the repetitions. The measurement is finished. You see a check mark in the data and it's stored in the data folder. In the plot control under selection, this one here, we can also step through the CV cycles using the selector. For example, now you see all repeats and all CV cycles, but you can also select the first repeat, the second, the third, or the fourth. And again, you can do that same thing with the repetitions as well. First repetition or the second repetition. So you can select what kind of data you would like to show, to show. Like this. When you want to add another command to the procedure, that's also possible. So for example, we can add an additional uh, measurement to this procedure. First, I was, I was in the data, but I have to be in the procedure to add commands to this procedure. For example, I can put an impedance measurement, EAS frequency scan, at the end of the measurement. I can set the potential uh, of this impedance measurement the same as the last step of a voltage which was used by the last pulse. For example, I can apply and I can link this one to the last pulse potential, for example. What I have to do, I have to open the step potential and link this to the main parameters, like this. And now I can apply uh, the same potential as my set potential for the impedance measurement. So I can refer my potential to an already existing main parameter, like step potential. So at the moment it's zero volt, but I can modify this to uh, zero point two volts, for example. And you will see that the last pulse is also 0.2 volt now. The frequency scan, we can also link the parameters to the main parameters, like main parameters, uh, first frequency, last frequency, and, well, that's the most important, and amplitude, we leave it as it is. We can add the plots of the frequency uh, imp electrochemical impedance spectroscopy frequency scan to the plot ribbon like this. And it's already suggested the Nyquist and the Bode plot we created. We modify the first frequency, let's say uh, 10 kilohertz to one hertz. And the step potential, apply potential, we can modify the name of that uh, last pulse potential okay which is linked to also to the set potential of the impedance measurement as you see here yeah so you can design any type of procedure with the commands on the right side of the uh, window in combination with the procedure editor. So my measurement is 
of my procedures finished. I can save it. And now we have added an, another uh, thing to it. CV cleaning plus chrono pulses plus EIS. plus EIS. Save it. So now we can start the procedure and all the measurement will start. So it will automatically switch from DC measurements like cyclic voltammetry and uh, amperometry uh, like the pulses we've done to an impedance measurement at the end. This is a nice combination of procedures and commands which you can combine together in the Intello software. As you can see, the uh, graphs are built up in the plots. We can also follow it in the sequence. Are we in the repeat loop? And then we can follow the measurement the moment the impedance measurement will start. We can also watch the menu control window. So you'll see what kind of voltage is applying, what kind of current is measuring, the power and all the things. You go back to my plots and here you will see that the impedance measurement is running. And it's almost finished goes down to 1 hertz. Now it's finished, you'll see a check mark of the data. This concludes the third part of the introduction videos. Thank you for watching Intello videos. If you found this Intello video helpful, please like and share with your colleagues. You can subscribe to the Metrum Autolab YouTube channel so you are notified when new videos are available.